Welcome back to Trip Preps. I'm Eric Lee alongside Todd Sommerfeld, and we're ready to break down week four of high school football. We'll just run through the games real quick, and then we'll dive into some of the, the more in-depth breakdown. I was at Aquinas at Westby. Blue Golds win, improved to 3-0 for the first time since 2008. They won 46-26. You were at West Salem Toma. Yeah. West Salem getting the 28-14 win to snap quite the losing streak. Yes. Um, DeSoto over Hillsboro, 44 Zero St. Croix Central beats on Alaska 31 27. Melrose Mendoro 28. Independence Gilmanton 14. Blair Taylor over Pepin Alma 22 19. Yes, so that is our slate of games tonight. Um, tell me what you saw out at West Salem. How did they how they snap the losing streak? How did it come about? They were a little excited too. I, I imagine. <laughs> I imagine. Um, I, to me, I, I thought they snapped the losing streak in a very impressive manner. Um, I, I think West Salem went out and played well on both sides of the ball. They got some turnovers. They uh, turned turned one of them into a touchdown uh, uh, for sure. Uh, and they just made the plays when they needed to make the plays. Mm -hmm. And that's something that hasn't happened. They, they didn't win a game last season. They also didn't get throttled all season last right. year. They lost some really close games. And they weren't like a typical 0-9 team. And they came out and played on Alaska tough last week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we thought this would be a good game with Toma. Uh, they scored the first 14 points, never trailed, uh, kept their composure. Uh, later in the game, uh, in the fourth quarter, Toma got within 21 to 14. Mm -hmm. And West Salem responded with a really nice drive. They picked up three third downs on it, ended up getting a touchdown. And... Those are the kinds of things you want to see a team do when they're right. coming out of this, because that's going to do nothing but build confidence. And not and going into a game against Aquinas, you need that. And, exactly. and they got the win. They they know they won the game. Toma certainly didn't go out and lose this game. I thought Toma played pretty well defensively. Mm -hmm. Still, they moved the ball. Uh, they just weren't able to finish things off. Their their first two drives, they got to the West Salem 35, 36. Uh, they turned it over on downs. Uh, they got intercepted. Uh, they, it just didn't work out for them. And they fell behind, got in a hole. Had a little trouble running the ball tonight. Uh, did okay with it, but not the way they wanted to do. And, you know, West Salem got three picks out of, out of Justin Gerke, mm -hmm. um, who did have a really nice touchdown pass to Drew Brookman toward the end of the game to get him within the touchdown. I think Gerke, when you watch Gerke play, you see a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. There's just times where that big play isn't there. Sure. Or, you know, defense is forcing him right. or something. So I, I certainly don't think that, you know, he's any kind of problem at Toma. They're, <laughs> uh, they just need to get the running game to be a little more consistent. And I think that'll go along with the way Gurky can throw the ball. He throws a nice ball. Mm -hmm. um, it just didn't work out for them tonight. West Salem had a new guy at quarterback tonight too, right? Yes, yes. Uh, Brett McConkey, a sophomore. They put him in there, moved Noel LaFleur back to the secondary play some defense. He did a good job there, and I thought McConkey did a really good job tonight. Not ridiculous big numbers. He passed sure. for 114 yards, rushed for 56. Not bad. Right. Uh, especially for a debut, and didn't make bad mistakes in the game, and was able to put together that last drive. He made some nice throws on that drive. All three of those third downs they picked up were passes to Jack Haley, who had a big game. Um, had the last touchdown, had a really nice catch, 28-yard catch, uh, before that to set up the touchdown, had an interception in the end zone, uh, did a little bit of everything for them. But I, I was impressed with McConkey, and I think even talking to Co Coach Yane after the game, making that swap and putting LaFleur in the secondary, he played very well there. I think that may have made him better on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and like you said, that'll be key going into next week against Aquinas. I mean, they're obviously riding high too. It's a big deal yes. for them to be three and zero, especially considering where the program was just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but we say that a lot, but it's true. It is, yeah. <laughs> um, it was kind of an interesting game at Westby. Uh, it was you're you said pretty it was much just kind of one big. It was a big, pretty much yeah, a huge yeah. snowball in, yeah, the, yeah. in the third quarter. It just really felt almost like two different games. Uh, the first quarter, the teams were trading punches back and forth. Um, I was nobody, by the nobody, time score. yeah, nobody, nobody. It was, it was, tw what was it, 22, 22 20 at half. Yeah. Um, neither team, I mean, Aquinas led throughout the game um, and never gave up the lead, but 
Westby was always within one possession. Mm -hmm. And even after Aquinas scores on the opening possession of the third quarter, they're still within one possession. Aquinas is only up by eight. Mm -hmm. It's 28-20 at that point. And they, Westby looked like they were going to drive back down and either get it back down to two points or tie it up at 28 all. And they get the ball down to the 11, the Aquinas 11. Uh, and Garrett Vantlin, who is filling in for Andrew Brett Jorgensen, he went okay. down uh, with a head injury in the first half. And okay. He ran really well, actually, the sophomore did. Mm -hmm. um, and he had a lane and is met at the goal line and fumbles at the one. And Aquinas recovers, goes 99 yards. Uh, which totally changed. Well, it just those changed. Drives always do. Just changed mm -hmm. the feel of the game. Um, but then to compound that on the ensuing kickoff, Westby fumbles, and the next play, Aquinas scores again. Mm -hmm. So just like that, an eight point lead became a 20 point lead. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it just felt like a huge hole to come out of after they had worked so hard in the first half to. Uh, Westby had worked so hard in the first half just to, to keep it close and stay in the game. Yeah. And they were right there. And then you give those three plays, like the fumble, the drive, and then the, the next fumble just really tore all of their momentum that they had built down. Um, but another good game yeah. from Jackson Flotmeyer. I was going to say, we, I was just going to say, we, we've talked about him a lot and, and how well he's playing, but you said there's a receiver we probably should talk about. A there is. Now. Quinn Miskowski, <laughs> he had six catches for 120 yards and three touchdowns tonight, and all three of those touchdowns came in the second half. Uh, I think it was particularly important that they were they threw the ball a little bit more in the second half, and I think part of it was that Will Cambio, uh, returning the opening kickoff of the second half, goes down with a knee injury. Uh, not really sure how serious it is, but he didn't play the rest of the game. Okay. Um, so... I think they were kind of leaning on Flotmeyer saying, hey, we're going to put the ball in your hands and who do you want to go with? And it was Miskowski and he can just, it seems like he can just run by guys. It's not like he's beating anybody on any fancy double moves or really anything like that. I mean, there was one, one of his touchdown catches was on a wheel route. So, I mean, I guess okay. if you consider that to be um, <laughs> something, but, but it's really just him just kind of running by guys. Um, but yeah, six for 120 and three touchdowns. And like I said, all three in the second half is that's, I mean, that's an, to have three touchdowns in one game is impressive enough as mm -hmm. a receiver, but three in one half is, um, yeah. is something else. Yeah. So they're not, they're not hurting for talent over the Aquinas right now. No, they're certainly not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, it should be an interesting matchup, especially with, you talk about West Salem's defense playing pretty solid. Yes. Um, they're, tonight, they're gonna make, how, yeah, they're going to make, uh, Flotmeyer work. For his completions, work for his yards. I think, uh, based on what I saw from them tonight, and and just knowing what I know about West Salem football, um, it, 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 I think it's going to be a, a really fun game. Yeah. <laughs> and there, there's been in a season like this, there's been some games to look forward to, but this kind of feels like maybe one of the first big games. Yeah. You know, we've had. I, I don't know. Uh, last week, Alaska West Salem turned into a really good game, but mm -hmm. West Salem hadn't won. Uh, this this is kind of shaping up to be kind of the first big one he's got. Yeah, it was funny. Aiden Lee after the game came up to me. He was like, "You got to make sure that you're you're there." Well, I was like, "Yep, we'll be. Don't worry, we'll be at this game. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we we'll be there." Um, but yeah, I mean, on Alaska too. We talk about them a little bit. They yeah. fall on the last second. Yeah, the last they, second play there. Twelve. Yeah, twelve seconds left. Uh, they fell behind. They tried to do some crazy stuff. I think on the kick return that just didn't work. Uh, led three different times in the game. Yeah. Scored first, then then went ahead after uh, Secret Central caught him and, and went ahead with about three minutes left mm -hmm. in, in the game and then gave up that, that late touchdown there. So uh, interesting game for Onalaska today. DeSoto scored all their points in the first half yeah. against Hillsborough, so obviously something's going right down at the pit. Yeah. It'll be interesting now to see them turn around and go to Hillsborough and play again. Right. Yeah, next week right. uh, in one of these odd ball Home and homes during during a, a COVID <laughs> season here, um, and Blair Taylor a, a big win. They scored 14 yep. points in the fourth quarter uh, to win that game. They're down 19 to eight early in the fourth. Yeah, and they're three and zero now too. Yes, so big win for the Wildcats. Absolutely, uh, I think that about wraps it up for us. Uh, as always, you can find us at LacrosseTribune.com. You can also find us on our YouTube channel. Uh, our Channel name is really simple. It's just Lacrosse Tribune. Uh, you can search us. You can find us there. Uh, these videos will be there. 
Uh, we'll have our game stories up on the website along with the roundup. Um, and we'll be coming again at you next week. Yes, we'll preview uh, our big week five. Yeah. So thanks for coming tonight, even though it's very late, <laughs> although it may not be late when you're watching this. Um, and uh, thanks, thanks for coming to watch. We'll see you next time.